that up. All right, we are live. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Happy Monday. Uh, today's live, we're going to be going over more updates on the Riley string case. Uh, new footage was released, which is some body cam footage. Um, I had have gone over it, and there are some interesting things in there, uh, which we will go over here in a little bit. Uh, but before we get started, uh, we do always like to give back by featuring the missing. So uh, on top of covering missing prison cases, uh, today's missing prison case is Lila Santanello, missing out of Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, she went missing last year on June 27th at approximately 6.15 a.m. Um says Lila is 4'10", 135 pounds, dyed blonde hair with brown roots and brown eyes. She may, she has many tattoos. Um, let's see. There has been no evidence to connect Lila's disappearance to any other missing. Um, so there's not many more details than that. But here, I'll blow this up. This is Lila missing out of Kingsport, Tennessee. I figured I'd feature her since... Uh, we're covering a case from the same state. And if you have any information on Lila's whereabouts, you can call 423-343-9780. And then real quick, uh, for those that are new to the channel, welcome. I am Chris with Monsters Under Our Bed. We cover true crime mystery to the missing. Um, and we not only cover true crime, but we actually go out and help. And our case is going to be less than a month away. And oh, there it is. And that is going to be looking for this guy, Aiden Clune. He went missing two years ago uh, in April of 2022 uh, in Wells, Nevada. Um, we're going to be going out on April 13th and the 14th. So it's about three weeks away. Uh, we have been kind of saving up for a drone. And for those that have been donating, I, I do really, really appreciate it. We are about like 60%, more than halfway there. So I do appreciate that. If you can't donate, that would be awesome. Uh, if you can't, no worries. But uh, anyway, um, that is something we're going to be doing, like I said, three weeks uh, from now. And of course, uh, I won't be able to go live out there because it's in a dead zone, but uh, I do film out there. And of course, I'm going to be flying a drone, my drone operator. And so we're going to be searching for him. And um, like I said, I come back with a lot of extra footage. And so being a member or Patreon is another great way to support this channel and uh, where we cover get true. some behind the scenes kind of footage. So moving on to Riley's strange case uh for anybody that's not familiar with this case i will play just a quick two minute recap and then we'll get into the latest footage i'm sure a lot of you guys have probably seen it i bro broke it down in many different ways including separating the audio from the video just uh for different clues anyway i want to get too ahead of myself but i'm going to quickly just play this uh two minute recap for anybody that's not familiar and then we will get on with the latest crime mystery to the missing this is some of the last known video of college student riley strand just 22 years old from springfield missouri he went on a trip with some friends to nashville tennessee they went out to the famous luke's 32 luke bryan's bar on broadway for some fun on friday march 8th Later that evening, Strand was kicked out of the bar because he was too intoxicated. He was kicked out without incident, as family and friends of Strand said he's a sweet kid and non-confrontational. Saturday afternoon, about 16 hours after Riley was last seen, some of his friends came here to the Central Precinct, hoping to report him missing. When they couldn't get into the lobby, that's when they called 911. Okay, what is his name? His name is Riley Strain. Okay, and what color clothing was he last seen wearing? He's wearing jeans, boots, and a black. Riley Strain is caught on multiple cameras stumbling down the street a few blocks from the bar, and it appears he hits his head really bad. In the next video, it seems he is touching and grabbing his head, and from there he is acting really dazed and confused. Strand is sadly caught on another video for the last time near a toll bridge next to the Cumberland River. 
His last cell phone ping was just before that at 9.58 p.m. From here, it's unclear what happened to Strand, if foul play is a factor, or did Strand accidentally fall into the river? There are other concerns as to whether if Riley Strand was drugged at the bar due to his strange behavior stumbling down the street. Sadly, this wouldn't be the first time a male college student stumbled out of a bar and went missing, and they're found in a body of water. I pray this is not the same outcome for Riley Strand. It's been over five days since he was last seen, and we will be covering his story more in depth in our next live show. Okay, ooh, thought I'd put a little break in between that. Uh, so here is the new footage. Let me just get caught up with Chet. I saw a couple of people say uh, a few suspicious things. Um, I forget the name of the guy. I'm sorry. Uh, started with a B. I saw it up there. Mentioning somebody uh, was staring at Riley in some of these videos. If we get a chance, um, Big, I will take a look at that. I do have, of course, all the videos. Uh, and I do have them in order, which we will look at uh, a little bit later. Um, and we'll see uh, if we can point out what you're talking about. Uh, PJ uh, Slayton. Um, I want to say PlayStation. Every time I see that name, I want to say PlayStation. Uh, thank you so much, PJ, for the $10. Uh, that really appreciate it. That really helps us out. Uh, much love, you guys. And if you can, please hit that like button. That really helps get uh, not only Riley's case out there, but uh, the people that I feature at the beginning of the show. Uh, that's kind of something that we do because um, there's a lot of cases. And unfortunately, if I just fully focused on their case and upload it to YouTube, sadly, the algorithm wouldn't push out their case because no one's really talking about it. Um, you know, unless you're like a big content creator or something like that. But, uh, so that's how I kind of get like, uh, the smaller cases out there. I attach them to these bigger cases that are people are, you know, talking about. And, uh, so anyway, and I do take requests. So if anybody has uh, a family member or friend that went missing recently or before, uh, you can email me with the details. I'd be happy to feature them in an upcoming live show. So here is the footage. I'm just going to play it once. Uh, and then we'll get to it uh, and break it down. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's over here on Gay Street, uh, near First Avenue. Okay, so uh, a lot of things going on here. Uh, of course, he passes the officer, and this, uh, for anyone that does is not up to date, this is, from what we know, uh, as of now, this is the most up to date footage. Uh, this was kind of the footage that they talked about. Uh, we knew it was out there, but hadn't been shown to the public. It has now been released, which I think is good because. Uh, you know, you never know what they may may have missed, um, and maybe the public can help. But uh, Riley does pass this officer. I'm not sure what this officer is doing. It looks like his squad car is across the street. You'll see uh, when he's kind of walking this way, and he's kind of turning around. Uh, you do see a squad car. I believe this is probably the officer's squad car, I would assume. But, uh, yeah, he interacts with... Um, Riley and it seems like Riley is able to you know produce a sentence without doesn't sound like he's slurring um, There's one thing um, When I first saw this video it was like uh, the first one was uploaded on Twitter It was kind of cut a little bit where it didn't show him running so I missed that thank goodness I went and got the original uh, but the one thing that I noticed straight off is he's actually running um, Until the officer turns around which is kind of interesting
So here you can hear him uh, kind of, you know, slowing down his run just as he turns. I think maybe that running probably got his uh, attention a little bit. Um, and then, of course, probably Riley seeing him, you know, uh, I'm sure running past an officer is not a good idea at night, you know, especially really close. Uh, so I'm assuming he's, you know, just being Riley, slowing down. And then they both exchange words. Uh, and it sounds like Riley is a really nice guy. Um, there's also some, what sounds to be one other thing that Riley says, I'm not hundred percent, don't quote me on this, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But there's, I picked up, like I said, I enhanced the audio as well, which this one isn't, but I will play that later. Uh, it does sound like there's like a word said, uh, shortly after, almost like he, you know, they both exchange, uh, a sentence to each other more or less. And then almost like Riley says something as he's moving down further. But the other thing that's crazy is after they exchange words, the officer kind of walks for a bit. And then when he turns around, Riley is gone. I mean, he is a ghost. You can't, I zoomed in. I thought maybe you could see him like uh, if I slowed it down and stopped it, we could maybe see him like uh, on the sidewalk or uh, he's he's gone. Um. Real quick, uh, I see a couple things real quick, so let me get to chat. Uh, actually, let me play this. Let me get to that. So I slow it down, uh, and then we'll talk about the surroundings because there's a couple things the surroundings as well. But here's Riley. He was running. Uh, you can actually see him. Slow. We'll come back to those cars here in a minute. How you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Good. I mean, the, even though he only speaks a few words, it sounds like, you know, his, uh, you know, for what we'd seen before, uh, which he seemed pretty inebriated, lost, confused, especially in the, the footage that we last had when he's crossing into Gay Street, uh, you know, he's kind of like confused, kind of turns around uh, when he's crossing past the crosswalk. Uh, here, I mean, he looks just, and it's so sad because uh, now knowing his condition, I mean, he pulled it off amazing. I mean, not amazing, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, as just a, a regular individual that's not, you know, inebriated or drugged or whatever may have happened to him. Um, which is too bad in a way. It's too bad he didn't like as he was running, like, trip and stumble, uh, and things may have been differently. But this is Good, where... Good. So we can see this pole here, and this is uh, kind of interesting because this guy just disappears. Um, and so they exchange words. Oh, see, right there... Uh, we'll come back to the audio. We'll come back to the audio thing. But there's... It sounds like he says one more thing, uh, and it's really quick, but it's like cuts off <laughs> it's over here on Gay Street uh, near First Avenue North. So I zoom in and I, I've looked and looked and I, he is gone. I mean, just gone, which is crazy because uh, I know he's 6'7". I'm 6'3". I walk with a long stride. And usually if I'm like walking with friends, I'm usually I'll, I'll get ahead of them. And then I got to kind of slow down because I got that long stride, long legs. Uh, so I get he can cover some ground does make me wonder if he started jogging again but i was trying to listen to the audio i don't hear him jogging but it, it's tough to tell because obviously they're both going two different directions sadly um but man uh, as you can see here he is just gone you would think he you would kind of see him slowly maybe you know uh just kind of maybe a few glimpses of some kind of frame of him kind of walking off and I can't see it. It may be in there, but I, I don't see it at all. Uh, let me get to chat real quick, and we're going to go over some things, because uh, there's a lot here. Uh, Tina, oh, and Nadia, I meant to 
get to your qu- or, uh, comment. Yes, I agree. He appears to be uh, not intoxicated, but we know that's not the case. But yeah, I agree. Uh, Tina Marie, uh, just found your channel and you are amazing. Thank you, love. Thank you so much, Tina. That is so awesome. I really appreciate that. How is he gone so fast after the officer turns around? I know. Uh, so I have a couple of theories on that. And I'm sure people have probably already dissected this uh, a bunch. And I did see somebody. I was trying to get. Yeah, if you need to get a hold of me, just email me. Um, and uh, I will check it out. If it involves this case, let me know. Uh, or let the mods know. And I'll check my email. If it's for a missing person, um, I will check it after the show. That is the first bridge. So he, this is the Woodland Street Bridge. And so he is seen right here, and I kind of reenact it. Oh, actually, I think that was in the previous clip. But anyway, I, I showed where he was at. I think I do have a clip. But anyway, he, when the officer is kind of walking, it's just past this pole. And if we turn around, I mean, gosh, it's crazy how much, uh, how far this guy uh, made it from this officer. Unless he crossed the street. That's one other thing I think could have been plausible. But this is where the uh, officer's walking this way, he's walking this way, and... All the officer does is walk from here to here. Now, I would that's tough to say. I would say maybe that's, oh, man, so tough. Uh, that's like probably, t that's probably about five feet there. I don't know, like 20, 30 feet uh, approximately, somewhere in there. Not far. Uh, and he makes it, if he is still on the same side, I mean, he makes some distance, which means either one, he kind of walked for a little bit and then started jogging or sprinting again. And then he just, by the time the opposite turns around, he's gone. Or it's possible he could have crossed over, which I could see that, you know, um, him crossing uh, crossing over just to maybe, uh, just because it's the cops, maybe he's paranoid. Um, but either way, he's just gone. Yes, great, great comment. Yeah, uh, great comment, Christopher. Uh, keep in mind, these body cams have really wide angle lens, so everything looks further away than it really is. Yeah, it's kind of like a fish eye lens. Uh, that's what we used when we skateboarded. Uh, very expensive uh, cameras, uh, camera lenses. Uh, but yeah, so they're more kind of 360 panoramic uh, type view. Uh, and yeah, it does make things kind of... Uh, it's like your rear your side mirror so uh another couple of details that are interesting is we have two silver cars not one but two and uh and then of course we have the cop officer car right here but notice there's one silver car that just passed which uh will be helpful for when we look at the birch uh, video and at 951 it's like 951 952 uh, there's actually two silver cars that go they're not quite back to back as they were before but here they are there is two silver cars that pass by um, so I'm going to play that again because there's something that uh, goes missing in this but again we see one silver car Oh, I cut, the, you know, I kind of cut that off early. There's a second silver car. It's going to play again, but there's actually two of them. I think I might have cut that early, but I do play this again uh, further down. But yeah, there's actually two cars. That are, they were almost back to back. But uh, anyway, this is at approximately 951, 952-ish. Uh, so this completely lines up with everything. And then, of course... Um, Well, I want to get ahead of myself. Uh, we'll get to that here in a second. But here's those two cars again. Um, 
So the body cam footage they say is at 9:52. For those who are wondering, um, according to this, it's more like nine, late 9:51, uh, going off the birch tree video. Uh, but yeah, either 9:51, 9:52 is where this goes down approximately. Um, and it could be I don't know maybe the body cam footage was off by a minute or maybe they just. Uh, or maybe the bird streak was off by it a little bit. So yeah, one car, two car. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> okay, so I want to play the audio real quick. Um yes oh you got you, you got ahead of me um yes i'm gonna get into that quintessential that's what i noticed that's why i was saying there's something missing uh and we will talk about that yeah I, i'm sure people have been breaking this down um did i miss somebody uh wallflower i don't know where yours went uh wallflower thank you so much for the 20 dollars super sticker that is so awesome thank you so much for supporting this channel and uh getting us a little bit closer to that uh drone for next month um i don't know why i'm having a tough time with my my chat it's weird anyway all right continuing on no he was not he's going the opposite way he he started going the opposite way the second he left his bar uh and now also i Saw some people mentioning earlier, and I tried to get to it, but we've got almost a thousand in chat, so it's kind of hard. There's a lot of comments. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch the show. Uh, we're just starting. We're kind of breaking down this footage. There's a few things that I kind of noticed, and I'm sure others have as well. Um, but on top of that, we have new interviews with the family members. Uh, one was on Chronicles Olivia, which I took a few snippets from that, uh, just some details that i thought were interesting uh, i do have links to the full videos in the description and then uh surviving the survivor podcast youtube channel uh they just had an interview with family members uh i think uh i can't remember i know chelsea i forget the other guy's name i apologize uh and i took a few snippets from that that i thought were interesting uh so we will get into those as well okay one thing before I play this video anymore, I wanted to show you guys, which, ooh, let me see what the, that's 649. Okay, we'll come back to that real quick. Here is the audio. This is the enhanced audio. It's actually, you know what, it would probably be easier if I do this. Then I can replay it easier. All right, bear with me two seconds. Recent file. There it is. Okay, so I uh, separated the audio, and it's right. How you doing, sir? Okay, so here they have a little conversation back and forth, and then there's something that almost sounds like it comes from Riley that he mumbles. How you doing, sir? Good, how are you? Good. Or excuse me, right here. <laughs> you guys hear that? I'll play it a couple times. Let me play the uh How you doing, sir? I'm good, how are you? Good. I don't know, it almost sounds like he says like have fun or something. I'm not sure. Let me know if you hear something in that play a couple more times. It's right after. It could be just some kind of audio that picked up that may sound like a voice. That does happen. Um, but it does almost sound like he's kind of, you know, they both exchange back and forth. And it's like Riley finishes it by saying something like a two, two words or something. <laughs> And there's one other thing. This right here. I'm 
almost sounds like he says, or somebody, it almost says like, holy shnikes. Let me know what you guys hear. Again, it could be just some kind of distorted audio that got picked up. That does happen. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I do think that one that's straight after could be Riley kind of maybe saying something uh, kind of under, under his breath, more or less, just kind of... Uh, Possibly to the officer, but anyway, Buddy, we'll get back to the true crime footage. mystery. All right, we left at six forty-nine. All right, pawn that back up. Oh, you hear officer? Um, oh, just partying? Just partying? Is more of the footage, uh, and then we it was over here on Gay Street, uh, near First Avenue. So we have another vehicle that goes by. So we we're we able to account for two vehicles, the two civil cars that we saw at the beginning. Uh, that they're seen moments after on the Birch video, but we have this red Jeep that goes by. Well, at 9:52, we have. The two silver cars, which we saw, go by right as the video started. And we know that Jeep. Okay, so as you can see, I have a timer. That Jeep from, um, basically from the second silver car that kind of, as it's passing, I just kind of uh, looked at the timestamp of that until we see... Um, after he walks for a little bit and then uh, just before the video ends, as the Jeep is passing by, I did the two timestamps. It's about 30 second difference. So that means we should see this red Jeep um, somewhere between, you know, 30 seconds and a minute uh, after this second silver car. Yeah, I'll play uh, some tidbits of that, Rob, um, here in just actually a little bit. Because uh, this footage is literally, so we know. So just to kind of put this in context. We just watched those two civil cars go by just literally, what, like uh, 10 seconds ago. So we know Riley should be on his way towards this area. Uh, and for anybody that's kind of lost and wondering what's going on. The cop is right here. Riley is walking this way. And unfortunately, there's no footage of this area right here between the two bridges. But right here is the next camera pointing north. So, you know, we have a little shadow zone here. But the camera or the officer uh, captures him at approximately 9.52 heading this way. And we see two silver cars go by at the same time. And we can account for those two silver cars right here. And then we have a red Jeep that shows up 30 seconds after. So that means that we should have a red Jeep. And so I'm just going to let that play. And the interview is going to come in here pretty soon. Uh, I think it starts with Surviving the Survivor and then goes to Chronicle, or it might be the other way. Actually, I think it starts with Chronicles of Olivia. We have this one gentleman walking down the street. Doesn't look like him. But notice, there's a car that goes by that is not a red Jeep. It's the first car to go by since the two silver cars. It's not a red Jeep. And remember, there was kind of a 30 second. Drink. I don't even know at what location it might have. Actually, I probably was talking when uh, that 30 seconds, or maybe I didn't put that up. Oh, I did. Okay, it just popped up really quick. 
But that's at the 30 second mark. And the only thing that we see after the two silver cars is this guy walking, which I don't think, I don't know, wait. I don't know, maybe he could be involved, but uh, we see that's a third silver car go by, but no red Jeep. So that is kind of interesting. Um, and I would say about the summer time around here, we, if Riley Street, continues walking, I don't walking, even know what location it might have. We should see him. So I leave this video playing while we, I like I said, I took some snippets of the interviews today and from Chronicles Olivia with some new information. Uh, I'm going to play that while we watch this because technically, uh, if the perp, if this was foul play, um, and something happened and they left north, then the perp would be obviously caught on camera. And there are a few kind of interesting things. One, we the missing red Jeep. And two, you have that guy running at 956, which is kind of interesting. And then, like, did some, I don't know, like, I... I'm just scared that what if okay, some great. person uh, hit something in his drink because he only had one drink. Yeah, we, we discussed that, uh, and I can give you a little more backstory on that. They were approximately in the bar for about an hour and 45 minutes, I think, is what the timeline is. They had hit a institution, another bar previous to that, which we've all done that even at my age. We still had those cool things back then. Uh, but we think that they were there for a pre- yes beverage or something and then ended up at Luke Bryant's. I do know that the parties that came from Mizzou were separated at that point. There was a group at another bar shortly down the street and then the group that was in uh, Luke Bryant's 32 bar. Uh, everybody that has been in Riley's live jacket and literally in that amount of time something like this could happen. So we, we know that with his body actions, the three videos, we did learn today, too, that there has been at least one, possibly two more videos that have appeared. Uh, they are unfortunately not from the, low, you know, the last location where we have been pinged with the phone, but they are in between, which just gives us more footage to look at cars, people, uh, pedestrians. Let me know how the volume, let me know if that's a, a little loud. I'm not sure. Uh, that might be a little too loud. But uh, anyway, this is from Chronicles Olivia. I think she posted this yesterday. Uh, so I'm assuming the interview was done, I think, probably just before they found the credit card yesterday. Uh, so keep in mind, this is a, a few days old. Um, but there is some new newer information. And then, of course, I know Surviving the Survivor had the same, uh, same guy on, plus Chelsea, um, which offers even more information on what happened as he left the bar because so i know a lot of people uh kind of are upset with the fraternity brothers or so-called friends but it sounds like there was some miscommunication and i don't want to get ahead of myself but they do talk about that and i i don't think it was the friend's fault i mean obviously they could have sadly um i don't know it's too bad there was just wasn't better communication i think on the little scooters, as I call them, just everything that we can possibly look at. It's possible. Uh, in, in several of the videos, there's one specific car. There's a couple of people in jackets. Uh, now, granted, you have to take those in respect. These are literally less than 100 feet from each other, some of these videos. 954. So these can be very innocently people that just happen to literally be there at that time. But uh, we are getting more pieces to the puzzle. It's extremely frustrating to the family. We wanted our boy home. There was actually three cop cars. Because um, there was actually one that went down the street. I was looking at chat. But there's actually one that goes before these two that go down. Uh, I believe it's before those two. There's another one that actually goes south. So it's kind of wild to think that there was all this law enforcement right there. On Friday night. You know, it's not happened. We're not giving up hope. Uh, we have had the most ex tremendous response from the Nashville people mm -hmm. down in that area. Yes, and I saw there was a um, homeless encampment across the river under the bridge. But the right. thing is with the bridge, I thought that it was like e you just walk onto the bridge and boom, you cross. No, there's like a little staircase. I don't think he went up that. that it's very, in yes. his, exactly. In his current condition and what we've seen in those videos, he would not have been able to walk up. So I, I 
kind of disagree. I don't, I don't think it's not entirely impossible. And for anybody that's wondering what that is, and there's the only, I guess there's two scenarios what could have happened to that Jeep. And I saw somebody wondering, they didn't see a Jeep. There is a Jeep in the video, and we will look at it again if you're coming in late. But anyway, so obviously he's last seen walking under, wait, are we under, oh, let me go back here. Went a little bit past. So obviously he's last seen, uh, it's captured here. And the stairs that they're talking about, I'm assuming, is these ones right oh, right here. Uh, which obviously can lead you to this bridge, or you can go down, uh, I think, is this like First Ave or something like that? But, um, so these are the stairs. And it is interesting, he kind of just disappears from the video, and it makes me wonder if he crossed the street. Now I know, of course, his wallet, or not his wallet, his credit card will be found over on this side. So clearly... Either he ended up back over, or or it was tossed. Uh, with the Jeep, the only thing I could think of is if the Jeep pulled into this parking, uh, uh, square parking, the public square parking. That's what I meant to say. I don't know if this is like uh, like 24-7. I don't know if anybody ch in chat uh, knows if this is like uh, open to the public. Uh, I, I'm assuming it is, but um, be interesting to note because uh, that could be where the Jeep went. But clearly, the Jeep either did a U turn, which they'd have to do a U turn probably here. Um, and then, of course, we wouldn't see it because it, it goes the other direction. Or it pulls in here, or it pulled over and it, it could be involved. Um, but anyway, that's the stairs they're talking about. Uh, a lot of people, when they do a Google view, they look at it. They don't understand that that's 20 or 25 feet above where, you know, he was last seen on the ground. And yeah, if sadly. you look down towards the river, it's still an additional 10 to 15 feet to the river, you know, which is really crazy. Um, oh, here's this guy running. And in my opinion, man, out of all the things... Uh, that we've gone over since he went missing. This guy running at approximately 9.56 p.m., which would have been a few minutes after Riley was last seen. You have this guy running. Um, I think it's possible uh, this guy that could have been, been involved. Talking to, that has came out and talked to us. Uh, I'll be honest with you, our best leads to date has all come from the homeless community down there. They are the very first ones oh, is that okay. can Thank you, verify Christian. Riley from after the time the cell phone turned off. The next day, we had another one come forward. We have a third that has also reached out. Uh, the homeless community moves around a lot, you know, so we're just waiting in the river, et cetera, at the time that may be able to get us footage. Um, we've reached out for that. She's actually been reaching out to it, um, you know, the crazy part about it, uh, I can throw the river scenario in for you. I think, from what I've been told, last weekend to where it is right now, the river is four foot lower than it was last weekend when all this went down. That is interesting. So uh, I guess they had a lot of precipitation, and the river was uh, a little bit uh, deeper, uh, which means uh, obviously it would have came up a little bit higher. Uh, four feet sounds like quite a bit. Um, and now it's lower, which would help if by chance he did end up in the river. Uh, cause obviously the same thing with Audrey Cunningham, uh, obviously they were able to slow it, which I'm sure helped as well. Um, but that is interesting that it was kind of, uh, deeper, um, when he went missing. Uh, let's see, uh, June wonder if, wonder if guy who did robbery is the one running in other video and maybe hurt Riley. And I'm assuming um, you're talking about this guy running here. Um, yeah, it's possible. I, in my opinion, that's the closest thing uh, or the biggest thing uh, that raises a red flag out of everything we've seen. Anna Sweden, member for nine months now. Thank you so much. Family friend Chris Dingham spoke on Facebook. Okay, interesting. I'll have to look at that as well. Um, and... Uh, Mary, uh, have you seen the video of the two cop cars driving past him? If it was not the silver 
cars if you can please show it was on cctv and which i think i'm just showing now maybe you're a little bit behind mary um because yeah we're just showing those right now uh christopher uh and thank you guys so much um keep in mind these body cams have really wide oh we already went over that i missed one true crime beat good to see you member for 12 months over 12 months thank you so much good to see you true crime beat um christopher and all serious that first sound after they talk could just be the officer uh especially the way he coughs after maybe like i said yeah it's i just found it interesting that i picked up some extra audio after they exchanged a couple words and was wondering if maybe riley was uh kind of said another two words or something after. we had an uber driver reach out right out of the box on sunday and was talking about saying hey i had some fraternity boys i dropped off it was pouring down rain yada 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 it ended up not being riley's crew but crews with them and she told me she goes we had a horrendous rain and, and thunderstorm that weekend and we look at that and going, wow, if that river was four or five foot taller than it is right now, if something would have happened to Riley being in the river, there is no telling where exactly, how far down the river he is. We have the Cajun Navy reached out to us. Uh, I have never heard of them before. Incredible organization. Uh, the way it was described to me, if I remember correctly, they are actually like a subarm of the Navy. Uh, they're non for profit. They submit paperwork in. Just wondering if you have any questions for that. Okay. So that was just a couple of clips from Chronicles of Olivia. She did the interview a couple of days ago with a family member. Uh, and I have a link to that in the description. Now is Surviving the Survivor, uh, which they just did a live show a few hours ago. And I, um, yes, I'll get to chat in a second. Um, and they just did an interview, and I just took a few snippets from that because there's some very obviously interesting information in that. So, and if you want to see that, check it out after the, this live show. Uh, links in the description for that one as well. But I took a few clips, and then if you're coming in and wondering what we're watching, this is probably about like 9:58, 9:59. So five minutes after we went missing, uh, if any perpetrator, if foul play was involved and they went north obviously they would be captured on this camera so that's why i kind of just left this playing while we listen to the interviews uh with the kind of latest details and then uh we'll go back to the footage uh, again here um, in a minute um have at it oh well, i do have one question i know me and my family are obviously have this we all have the same question but so after they found his debit card and it was by him by yeah. itself is that common can I take uh, that? Yeah, Tom, go ahead. All right. So just looking at it quite logically, right? You know, leave my expertise of it, you know, aside that it was either there because Riley dropped it, right? Which seems possible, but doubtful. Maybe he stepped in the woods to use the restroom because uh, he got thrown out of the bar unexpectedly. And he's, he had been drinking at least one drink and two glasses of water. So um, and then perhaps he dropped it. I just feel like that's unlikely. Who's carrying their, their debit card loose mm -hmm. like that? Maybe he was, who knows? Or someone took it while Riley, you know, took it from Riley, either at that encampment or elsewhere, and the card was transported then to that homeless encampment. And I know some people, uh, I know because uh, Hey HJ was in the chat, and I didn't get a chance to ask a question because uh, I was preparing the live for today. Um, but did anyone ask like what he had on him uh, does anybody know if they asked the family members, like, did he have a wallet or was he just carrying uh, his card and ID? Because uh, I, I didn't catch the whole thing, but from what I saw, nobody, uh, they did talk about the credit card, which they're talking about now, but they never mentioned or get asked, like, what he possibly may have on him, like a wallet or did he just keep his card around? Either way, I, I think that, that, that spot, that encampment there needs to be ground zero of all investigative efforts. And I think Nashville police, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, Chelsea, has done a pretty good job of keeping the family apprised of updates and providing information to the public. But my only critique is that they need to be treating that spot where that credit card, debit card was found as a crime scene. They need to tape mm -hmm. it off. I, all day online, I totally I've been agree. watching TikTokers and rubberneckers there all day marching through this crime mm -hmm. scene. 
uh, as if as if there's nothing going on, as if it's a tourist attraction. That needs to be taped off, and they need to begin pulling out evidence, uh, every yeah. single piece of debris from there, and then raking it down, looking for hairs, fibers, fingerprints, another credit card, anything, his yeah. shirt, you know, any article of clothing. When I was an FBI agent, I conducted many searches of landfills and garbage dumps looking for human remains. And so I know that a river embankment full of trash is possible to do a debris search. And I haven't seen that happening yet. I totally agree. Um, Chelsea, one of the things that came up that maybe you can clarify. Front of the shirt, and it looked like the shirt that Riley had. People said it, that was not accurate. Um, do you have any confirmation of that? Um, oh, Oh, that's huge. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, yes, Chris, he had a Michael Kors, that's a uh, expensive brand, wallet and money. Oh, and money clip and his Apple Watch and iPhone. Okay, so we know the Apple Watch. So he had a Michael Kors wallet. Wow. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody responds, right? Oh, that's awesome. You guys are awesome. Um, wow. That's not good. That's not good. As if he had a wall. Unless by chance he like pulled out his credit card and was paying for his drinks and then put that like in his pocket, not in his wallet, and then somehow that fell out, possibly. I don't know. I mean one way or the other. Have good. you have you found out exactly what the story is behind that? Um, no, so like we've heard a lady was out feeding the homeless. They saw a man on a bicycle that had like a uh, half zip sweatshirt on, uh, but they could see the front of the shirt and it looked like the shirt that Riley had on. Um, but unfortunately since then, Ooh. nobody has seen that person. You know what, that's a great point, Gil Heard. In my opinion, that card could have been in his shirt pocket and if he took his shirt off to throw up, it could have fallen out. That is not, that's not a bad theory. It's not, um, because it does have a pocket, right? Doesn't it have like a, a pocket? I'll look at so, it. So, and there's no, we don't have any photos or any proof of sure has a pocket. them, that person having that photo on, besides the lady that did see him with that on. So, unfortunately, haven't been able to find him or the shirt. And Chelsea, at any point during this conversation, we usually talk for about an hour, hour and change. If you have any questions uh, for experts, uh please jump in and i think we have chris ding hey chris how are you oh can't hear you but my um let's see if, uh i'm gonna jump up bounce you out and uh the I, coe I will off take here. care of you and then we'll get you back in get it i understand that they have to and one okay so this is uh very interesting stuff uh that he talks about here this is where uh i think he talks about what happened just as he left the bar, because obviously a lot of people are kind of upset uh, that the fraternity brothers, so-called friends, um, could have done more. But it sounds like there was something else that he did before he just wandered off from that bar, which uh, was interesting to learn uh, today. And then also that from the interview earlier, Chronicles of Olivia, he said that they did go to a bar previous to that one. So it is possible he could have... Um, been intoxicated from the first bar and then didn't really show it until he got to the second bar and then, you know, was, oh, you know, and then that, that third or that one drink was one too many. Um, or, but they did say that the, the previous bar they went to was kind of like a pre gathering, um, before they actually went out to these other bars. So, uh, on the other hand, he could have been slipped something. We understand that they are steps in front of us right now. We were very appreciative that they brought her with no evidence. There's no yeah. DNA at the scene. There's no issues of vomiting. Uh, there's nothing. The boys went down Sunday uh, when they were down there from the last ping of the cell phone. You guys have seen the terrain, and it is variations. There's parts you can get to the river parts of 10 foot retaining walls, et cetera, real close in that area. They were looking for broken branches, uh, places that looked like somebody could have been drugged. It had poured down rain tremendously that weekend. The river right now currently is four foot lower than it was last weekend. With 
he mentioned rain poured down. You see him hitting that pole there. Uh, did that give you some pause that maybe um, he could have concussed himself or something, Chris? Yeah, we, the crazy part when those videos were released, naturally they weren't in order. So we had to wait till the third one showed up to put him in order. I'm glad you put that video up right there with him running behind the food truck. Uh, the family actually went to the food truck. There's been a lot of people that's jumped on that video, tried to dissect it at the very far right corner. When that last video starts, there is an altercation in that intersection. A lot of people thought that whoever was in that intersection maybe possibly got a hold of Riley, was trying to rob him, et cetera. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, we had family actually went to the food truck, looked at the footage from the food truck. The two individuals in that intersection that had an altercation, we think that is why Riley went behind the food truck instead of walking along the sidewalk. He saw what was going on. Once again, I can't emphasize, he's a very, he's a teddy bear. He's a 6'6 teddy bear. He doesn't want altercation. Went behind it. The reason I think Riley's running, if you'll see in the background, there's a fire truck mm -hmm. that's coming. Man, that, oh, sorry, turned myself down. Man, that's crazy. I was going to say that yesterday's live because uh, I was looking uh, at that footage and trying to kind of wonder why is he running because that is an interesting question. Uh, but there is that fire truck behind him. And, um, yeah, he could have been paranoid. That is interesting. Um, oh, real quick, uh, let me just quickly shout out a couple of people. Uh, for PayPal, Elizabeth M., uh, Kylie M., Christine R., Heather, Elizabeth J., Julie B., and Kathy C., thank you so much uh, for the PayPals. And I'll get to those who donated Venmo. Thank you guys so much. Um, I said we're saving up for a new drone to search uh, next month. I do appreciate those that could donate. Up the back way, there's a blip. You can't see it now, but there's a blip. There's somebody running back behind the food truck. I think they literally separated within half a second of Riley coming through there. Riley thought maybe they were chasing him. We actually went to that pole where Riley went down looking for possible blood anything that would have shown that how hard the impact would have been with Riley. Uh, graciously, there's not. So yeah, hundred percent. You go to the next video, he's walking down, holding the wall, rubbing the back of his head. That's you know, this right here. That is directly after what had happened. Yes. He, he has a stinger on him. Yeah. The thought of a concussion, something even more was really disheartening for the family. Cause we're like, wow. We don't know what happened in the bar. We know he was served alcohol. He bought alcohol. It's not like they forced it in him. He has got a buzz or he's I'm back to the hotel. He's not going back to the hotel. He's headed in a completely different direction. So what is going through his mind? You know, I had a, uh, was escorted. Sorry. I was trying to cut to a couple of different spots. And like I said, I didn't want to, uh, take a lot of, you know, too many clips for them. Cause, uh, but anyway, that's from surviving the survivor. There's one more clip here. This is where he talks about, uh, the plan after he left the bar. Right out the side door, which is policy for the <laughs> bar at 10 o'clock, nine 30 on a Friday night. You couldn't have went through the front door to begin with anyway. So they go out the side door directly across the street is another bar. Everybody can Google and figure out where that is. Riley went out the door directly across the street and tried to go into that facility. He was declined to go in that facility. They are joining management bars. They literally just watched him walk out one door that they know is a door they take people out of to the other facility. As far as what, who the people that was there with him, they were in two other bars that we have confirmed. Chelsea's been helping me on this very close to that bar that they were at. Uh, some of the people that was in one of the other bars that wasn't the one across the street was under the assumption that Riley was. Is that a busted window? And I hadn't even noticed it. Is that a busted window? I was there with him. They were in two other bars that, that we have confirmed. That's a busted window. I didn't even notice that. Um, cause I was just trying to look around everything else. Uh, yeah. So that's a busted window. So the, obviously this person probably just got robbed. Man, ooh, man, I don't even know how I missed that. I'm sure there's probably many that have spotted this and 
I've talked about it, but for those that haven't, uh, I just realized why the officer was there. Um, I'm because I was breaking other things down, but that is interesting, man. Somebody just got robbed, and that's probably what somebody was talking about in, uh, in the in the chat earlier. I, I didn't realize this is what he was there for. Um, I'm sure it's probably in the statement. Uh, that's interesting. Confirmed. Chelsea's been helped. Oh, real quick. Yeah, I'm going for uh, Air Mavic 3. I think it is Air Mavic. Uh, Mavic, obviously. I think it's the Mavic Air 3 or 2, depending on. I'd like to get a new one, uh, but kind of looking at some use, but probably we'll get a new one. Helping me on this. Very close to that bar that they were at. Uh, some of the people that was... And for those that don't know, this is Tony D. from Texas Equisearch. Uh, Equisearch was involved in the Audrey Cunningham case. Amazing community. Uh, uh, Tim Miller uh, was out there and uh, using his sonar boat and helped locate Audrey Cunningham. Amazing, uh, amazing group, organization, Texas Equisearch. Uh, and I had the honor to work with him once on the Dylan Rounds case and... Um, I know a lot of people are asking for them to uh, go and uh, search the river for Riley. One of the other bars that wasn't the one across the street was under the assumption that Riley was coming to them. He was asked to leave. They were in communication with the other people that was in the bar. Hey, Riley's out. Where are you guys at? Uh, Chelsea probably don't remember it. I don't, and it doesn't really matter, but just so we have context of the story. So Riley was... In, in intentions of going to another to another bar to meet up with friends etc the direction he went though you know we all now know is the complete opposite direction of any of his friends uh or even the hotel so so that explains a lot uh so he was going to basically go from luke's bar to um i can't remember which bar that is but the Let's see, where is Broadway? And there it is. And uh, there's Luke's 32. So he was, and I'm not sure if it's the Kid Rock one um, or if it's, did he say across the street? One of these bars, I'm not sure which one. I, I would assume probably this one because uh, he's coming out or there's a side entrance is there a side door here that maybe he got kicked out somewhere anyway but anyway long story short he came out of luke's so there the fraternity uh group that he was with there was like eight to ten people i don't know if they've clarified how many were out there but eight to ten is what i heard uh and apparently they were split up so like uh part of the group was at luke's and part of the group was at the other bar and anyway as he got kicked out uh, he was trying to go to the other bar, but uh, apparently he wasn't allowed in because they saw him getting kicked out of the other one. But the friends that were in the bar that he was trying to go to after Luke's, they were, you know, hoping to anticipate him. So I think that's probably where the communication may have gotten lost is, you know, the friends at Luke's probably thought, oh, he's just going to the other bar, uh, you know, so there'll be somebody with him. And then uh, maybe vice versa with the other group uh, since he didn't make it in maybe thought maybe somebody was with him and then sadly he stumbled off um, sounds like kind of the story I don't know what that adds to your deal but Riley I can tell you right now and, and you guys may or may not want know what Lake of the Ozarks is but we do like to entertain on the lake up here and Riley is is accustomed to going out and having some fun not doing getting you know, Riley's that guy that knows his limits he would stop back and he would also be the guy that would have a few beers pass the fun and then make fun of everybody else and make sure they got home mm -hmm. why Riley would go in that direction and I understand what you're saying we're not talking about a mentally intelligent kid at this moment but if you track that and walk that at night every step he gets once he gets down to first street is it's darker, darker. Yeah. farther away from everybody and more secluded yeah you know, fill me in on why you think he would be drawn to that because this kid was was even drunk or whatever was going on. He was smart enough to try to go across to the next bar to try. And anybody, and I saw somebody in chat wondering uh, what I was talking about. There's the red jeep right there, um, and we'll we'll talk about it one more time. Thank you, you so it. much. 
So uh, I'll just play this first part again. Uh, and then, yeah, there's some stuff on Twitter, and I think a, an interview with Brian Enton with that guy as well. But um, play the footage one more time. So uh, here's the cop cars car there. Uh, we see two silver cars go by, which we can account for uh, in the Birch video that's just up ahead. Uh, Riley is running, but as he's coming to the cop, he slows down to a walk. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. The cop is there, I'm assuming, responding to that busted truck window, which that's not a good sign. So clearly there was recently a vagrant um, that uh, possibly either just broke the window and or stole something from the truck. <laughs> I wonder if that's the guy running <clears throat> on uh, the Birch Street video. So I wonder if he's uh, at least a suspect in one of these. If Riley's thing is foul play. But it's this, I slow it down and I zoomed in and I can't see nothing. I do see some lights. I think somebody mentioned in chat earlier, you can kind of see some flashing. That is from across the river. Because at first I thought, oh, maybe that's like his cell phone light. And maybe he kind of stumbled off uh, just right here. But those are just lights. Um, they kind of flicker on and off from over the river. Um, Gay Street. Uh, near. Yeah, you can see him there. But yeah, he's gone. So it makes me wonder either he started running again um, or he maybe crossed the street just because of the cop. And so we can't really see him because the vehicle is there. First Avenue. Uh, and then there's the Jeep. Good. And there's just kind of a close up of him. Uh, appears to walk. Man, for somebody that's uh, clearly or sadly under the influence, and this officer just unfortunately doesn't know. Uh, man, he pulled himself together. And who knows if he had a concussion on top of everything else that may have been going on. But that's where he was basically walking. Good. How are you? Good. Anyway, one more time, I just want to play this. So here is the, let me get it up to speed, the two civil cars. Uh, there's there's one, and I accidentally cut this off too early, but this is the first one. There's one right behind it. Uh, unfortunately, this cuts off, but we just saw it a second ago. This is at like 951, like 952, but here's the first one. And there's the second one. And then, as I said earlier, uh, there's a 30-second gap between the second silver car and the Jeep. And the Jeep is not there. It's um, The Jeep is gone. So either the Jeep pulled into that parking garage, which uh, is 24-7, which is definitely possible. They're just looking for parking. Uh, or that Jeep could have pulled over, saw him stumbling up it's ahead. Only, um, Gay Street, uh, near First Avenue. Which is this Jeep here. Or they turned around. Oh man, I hate this, man. My, I don't know why. If I have my mouse over the chat, it won't update. <laughs> I have to like scroll down. Um, sometimes this chat, but one more time. Uh, two, the two cars are here. And what's really sad is there's three there's three law enforcement vehicles that are between this kind of like nine fifty one to nine fifty four time frame. 
uh, like a three to four minute window, all in where he supposedly went missing. Um, and I think the first one actually comes down. But uh, anyway, back to the Jeep. So if you don't forget, um, there's no Jeep that's seen. Uh, the next car, I think, is a, another silver silver car. And then after that, I think it's two white SUVs that go after that. So um, I haven't continued. Uh, there's still like another hour I need to go through to see if that red Jeep ever shows up. Uh, but other than that, uh, you have this guy wandering, um, which is approximately 952-ish. I don't even know at what location um, it might Let me turn this down. And then, so there's the white uh, SUVs. Is this the cop? Yep, so one officer, look at that. So that's at 953-ish. So you actually have an officer going that direction at 953 be interesting enough they had dash cam footage on and then a few minutes later we have the two officers and that might be even be the same car possibly um Either way, at least two to three uh, officer cars driving by right in that window he went missing. It's crazy. Especially if foul play did happen. But it's interesting. Uh, two minutes after they, they drive by, we have this guy running at 9.56, which I think personally... Uh, if foul play, or maybe that's this guy's responsible for maybe the breaking up the truck, one of the two. Um, there's a small possibility. Uh, Kylie, uh, Kelly Ritchie. Yeah, I've looked at it all. Uh, 955, 956. Uh, this is basically 950. Uh, well, this is just after 956 because we just watched the guy running by. Um, but yeah, there's, I think. One pedestrian, three cop cars. I almost got it all memorized in my head. Um, and there's two pedestrians together that walk a little bit later. And then it, it, then it starts to kind of get busy. Uh, and a bunch of people kind of go by and, on bikes and stuff. But as far as like suspicious stuff uh, and around that time frame, is that guy running? I don't know what happened to that red Jeep. Uh, again, if that's foul play. So let's look at this interview. I have not watched this yet. Um, that's in the other one. How much folder did I have on? Um, and then I'll go over the statement as well. End of the Strain family. Uh, he's helping in the hunt for Riley. Uh, first of all, Chris, um, I'm so sorry for everything that, that you're going through, that Riley's family is going through. This did seem like, like a big clue today, though, when police released this body camera video. I want to watch it again because you know Riley so well. I want to see what Sounds you good. think. You can hear <laughs> his voice. Uh, let's watch it again together. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay, so it's, it's quick, Chris, but you hear him say, how you doing, sir? And he says, good, how are you? And then good. Um, and, and again, it's quick, it's, it's hard to make up, but it doesn't sound to me like someone who is necessarily drunk. I mean, what, you know Riley, what, what, did you, what did you take from it, Chris? We pulled it together for a couple of Riley, seconds. at that point, uh, we've been emphasizing the whole time just how great a kid Riley is and even whether he was drunk or under the influence of something more than that, that's how polite Riley was. You know, how are you doing, sir? Great. That it, it was very warm, heartfelt for the family to hear his voice. Uh, that's the first time we've heard his voice in any video of anything that's been given to us since he's went missing. So it was a nice lead, but it, we even have more questions. Why are we to eight or nine in this before we ever get to see it? 
Yeah, well, I know that, that you, along with the family, were shown all the video that's available for the first time. I think that was over the weekend. We've now got this mm -hmm. body camera video. Is there more, though, that we haven't seen that, that police have shown the family? The, the family actually got to meet with the police uh, last night after the uh, debit card was found. Uh, they did take us in, showed us some more footage. Uh, unfortunately, that is the last footage we have. Everything else is back towards the bar and the route that Riley took. So they now have a digital trail pit from what he was walking along with a video footprint to put things together, to look for people following, extra vehicles in the same frame, et cetera. But right now that is the last video or voice that we have of Riley. Mm. Nashville police today, Chris, uh, again said no indication of foul play, and that's the way, it seems they're being careful the way they word it, but they Wonder say no change. indication of foul play. What do you make of this? I mean, did, what are your thoughts at this point? It's, uh, I don't play poker well. It's very frustrating. Um, <laughs> his debit mm. card was found in an area that we have been, everybody, hundreds of people have been in that area for eight days. Yeah, uh, It's in an area that you know, you think we would have seen something by now. We've had people in the water. We've had people on land. We've had people volunteer helicopters. You know, it just amazes us that it just happened to happen when it did. And we thank God it did. And those young ladies found it. They have been very, very open in helping us with this investigation. But yeah, we're, we have a lot of questions. Uh, every piece of the puzzle we've been receiving, it leads us down a hundred more questions. You know, mm. we're no closer to finding Riley. Uh, we've asked for the TBI to be involved. Uh, I've even reached out to the FBI, Homeland Security. You know, it's nothing I'm not trying to take a dig at what Metro Nashville's doing. I know they're doing with what they can. They're probably short staffed, but more eyes, more people, more, more people resources. invested in this. We're eight, nine days in. And how does a six, five, six, six, blonde haired, blue eyed guy disappear? I mean, he literally disappeared. Yeah, there's no, it, it, I understand. Is that on my end? No. And there's no DNA in no, the No, I was just going to say, it doesn't uh, seem to make a lot of sense. Like, like you said, sir, it doesn't, it doesn't add up, which is one of the reasons I think so many people are paying such close attention to the case. So I'm just going to pause it there so I don't uh, accidentally get copyrighted. News Nation's pretty good, though. But, yeah, the credit card was found uh, literally right in the last area. He's, you know, you basically have footage of him here. Uh, you have a camera here which doesn't show Riley, and then you, his credit card was found uh, just under this bridge here. Uh, so something happened in this little dark zone between the two bridges. Uh, and then you have the homeless uh, man who was interviewed that supposedly saw Riley uh, kind of fall into this this bush around here. Uh, and his credit card was found kind of like right down the, this uh, embankment here. Uh, so everything kind of lines up. Like something happened here. Either he was robbed or he fell in. Uh, and maybe he tumbled and maybe the credit card fell out as he tumbled. But man, it looks like there's kind of like a drop. And uh, I don't know. It's it's wild. Um, oh, real quick. Uh Daniel S., thank you so much for the $10 Venmo. Uh, you guys are amazing. I'll, next time I go live, I'll update. I'm, and we're getting really close to the the goal uh, for the drone. I really appreciate everybody. Uh, Peggy, thank you so much for uh, renewing your membership. Uh, I'm going to continue playing this. There's a few more minutes. But you make a good point. I mean, we're not trying to make a dig at police here. But when you hear that it's TikTokers who are out there, volunteers who find his bank card on the riverbank now a week later uh, and not police early on. I mean, is, is that concerning to you and the family? It is. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for myself, very close friend of the family, uh, but they are very concerned on what's actually going on right now. Uh, I, we thank the Lord. It's ironic that they are literally trying to ban TikTok right now. And they're literally the only ones that has provided us a solid lead eight, nine days after this has started. So there, there is bad sites to all type of internet. Uh, I was actually on the phone uh, trying to with another TikToker when the young ladies found that, had them send me a picture of it. Uh, I told them what bank he was with, et cetera. 
unfortunately, we have been warned of the bad side of this, how people will want attention. They'll print fake plastic mm. cards of people's identification, throw them in locations yeah, of crime. we've seen it before, yeah. Yes, exactly. So before I rallied the troops, the mom and dad, I did have them dial 911. I had them send me pictures of it and instantly knew, wow, we, we have our first clue. And, uh, you know, it was amazing. We were so happy. And I, and I told him, and, and you... And I agree with uh, what that guy said on Survivor, in the, uh, Survivor podcast. The second they found that car, should have closed that embankment down. Uh, just in case, because uh, the more people rummaging through that, uh, something could get lost, tampered with. I saw in an interview, they were extremely nervous. Uh, I told him, I said, you're about to have 100 people instantly come to that spot because yeah. they were live. And I said, I yeah. need you to make sure nobody comes within 10, 20 feet of where you found that card. Yeah. Because we can't take a risk of jeopardizing, you know, a potential crime scene. Uh, they did yeah. not label it at that mm. yet. That was smart. Uh, but, you know, yeah, just, and, and they were nervous yeah, and they yeah. go, okay. And, and it was awesome. But we're very concerned. I wish we had more people looking in this, invested in it. We just want Riley home. He's a great kid. Uh, he has a lot going for him. He was two months out from living the American dream and, and starting, you know, graduating college and being an investment career that he wanted to be in. Just how does somebody like that just disappear, especially when there's an officer within a half mile, quarter mile of that area looking for suspects and smashing grabs? You think if there would have been an altercation, which there has been some stories and unverified, he would have heard that because he's listening for, you know, yeah, so uh, wasn't it on the Surviving the Survivor podcast where they talked about, uh, was it Chelsea, that said that they can't confirm the shirt story? Let me know in chat. Uh, like I said, I was working. I, it was like two hours before I went live, or two or three hours, and I was breaking down the newest surveillance video and you know preparing a live, so I was doing like you know three things at once, so I wasn't fully uh, listening to every word, but... It sounded like they couldn't confirm the story that is with the the homeless one of the homeless uh, persons finding uh, Riley's shirt or had it on. Um, let me know in chat. It sounds like they said that wasn't confirmed um, and still rumor. Uh, Walkie Talkie, it's been a while. Thank you for what you do. It's so very sad. Thank you so much, Walkie Talkie. It's my pleasure, and I couldn't do this without your guys' amazing support. Uh, you guys are. Like I said, uh, the best. Uh, Idaho Jeep girl, you do such a great job. You're so thorough. Uh, the second guy running, the back of his shirt is light color. Riley's was black. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I don't think it's Riley. Uh, but there, that one guy running is interesting. going on with automobiles. There's the yeah, video of, of right course. There. Yeah, you'd think, like you said, the video, that the officer was so close, which just adds to the mystery. I want to ask you real quick, Chris. Do you know much about Riley's final communications? Have you had any access to his text messages or who he was talking to last? We did. Uh, you know, people, we've been trying to explain how much of a family oriented Riley was. Riley actually talked to his mom an hour and a half, two hours before this incident. Uh, mm -hmm. He's one of those kids that still loves his family just like ours do. That's why we love this kid. He was seeing a young lady uh, that there was a recently new relationship. And she is literally the last person that we know that had any communication with Riley from the family. Uh, she texted him to see how he was doing, if he was having fun. He sent kind of a scripted text back to her saying, good lobs, 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 or something like that. Good. She Whoa, said what? she even had good lobs. I'm trying to think, uh, good shots. The good Google lobs. it. She didn't understand what that slang was. She thought maybe it was something new they picked up in Nashville. <laughs> it was not new Wait, slang. Wait, say that again? Riley what was, was it? I missed it. What What did he text? Can you say it again? I didn't understand. He actually, yeah. No, he texted her back instead of saying good time. He said good lots, like L-O-P-S. Good lots. And, which we were okay. all confused. We're like, wow, what is that? And I wonder if that, that just kind of shows the state of mind that he was in. At yeah, I was just going to say that. Shows the state, yeah, he was in. Interesting. Uh, Kay Thomas, love your coverage, helping you uh, helping you to help him. Thank you so much, Kay. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, God, my my in, uh, 
my user interface is being weird here. That time, this is all within a 10 minute window of what you just seen where he went missing. All within 10 okay. minute. Well, listen, Chris, um, we're going to continue to cover the story. We've obviously had the parents on before. Um, Good luck. And, and we're all hoping for a really positive outcome Maybe here. You know. And we appreciate you coming on with us tonight. Thank you so much. Good laugh out loud. We certainly yeah, appreciate what loud. everybody's doing. TikTok media and everybody. Uh, you're the reason this is still fresh in the news. Text. The family yeah. sure appreciates it. It keeps them going. Yeah, we'll, we'll stay on it. All right, I want to bring in Jennifer Koffendoffer, former FBI agent and News Nation law and justice contributor. Man, Jennifer, mm. I mean, just talking to Chris there, it really is so heartbreaking to think of what... Okay. Um, anyway, that's kind of interesting. Good hops. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a... Yeah. Yeah, who knows, maybe, yeah, if it was, especially uh, <laughs> get lost. Um talk to text um anyway uh yeah it's kind of interesting though that it is all kind of within that time uh 10 minutes yeah so that's it right there um i don't think it's probably get lost i'm sure it was good in something whatever the second word was got lost in translation <laughs> um sadly Uh, he says no verification of clothing being Riley uh, strains or confirmation. Oh, or confirmation of vomit. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that is a pocket shirt. I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that a real pocket? In a way, that does kind of look like it's stitched right there. Does anyone know? Well, I can kind of see a stitch right there. Which would actually entail the opposite. Interesting. Yeah, if anybody knows, like, has that shirt or... Because, yeah, I can uh, see a stitch. I would have to, like, get some more stuff um, and tell. I think maybe if I looked at him walking, uh, maybe we could... See if it was kind of flapping. Let's see. Let's look at it one more time. Uh, and then we're going to finish Body up here. Body recover true crime. Uh, Mist just watch it one last time here. Um, yeah, because that kind of looked like a stitch. Yeah, that's a busted window, man. That's concerning. Sir. I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, check out the slow motion one and then uh, we'll finish <laughs> up here. We'll look at uh, see if there's anything on Facebook and Twitter. I just checked Twitter. I didn't really see anything. There's the statement, but we it's pretty much has the information we just went over. Um, Man, he's just here, gone. Uh, Street, uh, near First Avenue. Just gone. And I've tried to look over here. This is what I'm going to do after the video. See if I can see any movement on this other side. Because it's possible he could have crossed over and then crossed back. Uh, and so we just can't really make him out because of the vehicles. Uh, but man, I don't see anything. Uh, after this officer turns around, he is just gone. I wanted to get where I slowed it down right here. Um, yeah, drunk texting. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so here I zoom it in. I don't. Know. I don't know if we'll be able to tell. Oh, this is because I was focused on the cars. How you doing, sir? Yeah, it, it's hard to tell from that angle. Um. <clears throat> yeah i'm sure it i'm sure it was good something and um maybe like good night and i don't know maybe it just got completely <laughs> um lost in translation either he was doing it by hand and he was uh you know 
like I said, it probably shows the state he was in, unfortunately. Especially if it was 10 minutes before he disappeared. I mean, that's pretty much... He gets kicked out at, what, 9.35? And then if he goes to the other... Uh, so 9.35, 9.46, 9.35... Nine fifty-two, yeah. So it's um thirty-five, nine forty-five, nine thirty-five, nine forty-five. Yeah, so it might have been after he was uh, kicked out of the first bar. Not sure, but uh, it's a ten-minute window. Anyway, um. Yeah, thanks everybody for being awesome in the chat. Uh, I do apologize. Yeah, sometimes you do get um, ads. Uh, it is uh, on my channel. Um, it's turned on, but usually uh, you'd probably get maybe one ad per hour. Uh, now, usually it might be like back to back ads. Like most, when you do have an ad, they're usually like two back to back. But um, uh, Christopher, I wonder if the body cam footage after he passed the cop. If he sat down on a little wood wall right before the bridge, uh, his CC could have, credit card, could have fell out of his pocket and slid down the hill. It's possible. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know if that shirt is actually a pocket. Because it looks like a pocket, but it looks like it's stitched. That's something I'm going to look up after this. Um Near to love. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's just something. Uh, I, I doubt it's get lost, but I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, I see it like it. Yeah, it looks like a pocket, but there are some that are they're made to look like pockets, but they're stitched. So there there is no actual pocket. Um, but I, like I said, I, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They. Kind of. I mean, that does kind of look like one that's stitched kind of close. But like I said, that's not the best um, picture either. I'd have to go grab some pictures. Speaking of pictures, before you guys go, uh, the family wanted me to, sh well, wanted people that are covering his case to show. Uh, I think they got some new pictures. Here's a uh, family like everyone to see these photos. Obviously, Riley there. Strapping young lad there. Cute picture. So a couple of photos, uh, newer photos. I haven't seen of uh, Riley. Um. Anyway, let me. Panther authorities. No, just question, question. And that's about it. All right. So I think we've gone over everything that's been out. If I missed anything, uh, and you're rewatching it, put in the comments. Um, there was one other thing that they're trying to get, uh, actually, and I wanted to look up, but I forgot to. Um, they said that there's been a few times where there's been a situation, you know, kind of like this where somebody goes missing, but they actually end up in the river and they said that there is a, um, oh, forgetting the name of it, marathon. So, uh, a marathon somewhere. I didn't get a chance to look for it, so I'm not sure where it's at. But apparently they have a really good camera. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't know where exactly this marathon is. I'm assuming it's down downstream somewhere a little bit. Uh, but apparently it overlooks the river, and it's been used multiple times uh, in some previous cases of, sadly, someone falling in, uh, and they had to check this camera. So they said they're getting that footage as well, which I think will be huge, especially if it's, because uh, I guess the camera quality is really good, um, that if Riley was floating, or I guess, or in the water, they would hopefully maybe be able to see him. I don't know, it's nighttime, so it may be a little bit harder, but it's always possible. Uh, let me finish. Uh, so we had over 1,000, uh, basically 1,100 uh, votes. Um, 
42% think some kind of foul play happened to Riley. Uh, 31% think he, it's accidental. He fell in the river. Um, man, before the credit card, I was leaning more towards accidental. But, man, that that credit card ooh, without a wallet is is a little concerning. Uh, and then 27%, not sure. Um Again, I appreciate everybody taking the time. Um, oh, wait. Hold. Okay. Um, one hour ago, we do not know who it is. Nashville Metro is a call for a deceased person on 1st Ave and Gay Street. 1st Ave and Gay Now, isn't First Ave Gay Street? I mean, so here. All right. Um, this happens a lot, so I, I don't know if that is him. I don't see that tweet though. Unfortunately, I'm a little surprised. Anyway, uh, thanks, Karen. I will keep an eye on that. Uh, if they did find him, we'll go back live again. Um, I mean, that's out in the middle here. I mean, that's close to where he went missing. Um, but anyway, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. I know SF investigates. He's, uh, uh, I think, was he like a PI or something like that? So uh, I know he's not somebody that would just make up stuff. Um so that is kind of interesting, but it could just be somebody uh, that they just found uh, and it had nothing to do with Riley. Um, but I will uh, keep an eye on that. Go to SF Investigates. Um, I'm not sure what his Twitter handle is. Oh, there it is. All right. Um... That's not it. Uh, is it Twitter? Is It's on his X page. Did he take it? Oh. Oh, I see it here. Corpse dead on arrival. First Ave Gay Street. Uh, why the heck so many bodies appearing? Um, wait. It's a female... Unhoused from under the bridge. I'm just looking at the comments. Okay, is that uh, it's a female that oh, deed. Okay, so it's not Riley. Uh, some female, sadly, that uh, oh, deed. Um, right there where he went missing. Uh, but yeah, not related. Uh, glad we looked at the um, comment section because uh, that does happen a lot when we cover these cases uh, something happens as I'm just about to finish up um, I don't think so Sebastian Roger hasn't been found um, sadly and we may do a story I may do a video on him as well there's just so much going on and it's hard to you know uh, it's hard to do a bunch of cases uh, at the same time. Um, you kind of have to devote your time to one or the other, unfortunately. So I am going to sign out again. Thank you to everybody. Uh, I'm just going to make sure if I missed anybody. I apologize, I think. Um, I Oh, I missed Sensei. Um, Oh, he didn't ask cop for directions. Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad he just didn't trip and fall right there, sadly. Um, thank you, Sensei, for the $2 euro. Yeah, unfortunately, he didn't ask for directions uh, or stumble. Um, good to see you, April. Um, no, but I think Brenner is supposedly supposed to be going to a hearing sometime soon 
uh, James Brenner, the uh, person responsible for taking his life. We just don't know where Dylan Rounds is at, but um, so I may do a show uh, after his court hearing. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. We will be back Wednesday unless something big happens, and then we'll go live whenever that happens. Uh, But prayers for the uh, Strain family, uh, and I hope they get answers soon. Uh, Thank you to everybody uh, for taking the time to tune in. Um, And let me clean that up. And, yeah, we'll be back uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. So... Thank you, and uh, special thanks to my mods who do such an amazing job, uh, especially uh, it's not easy when you have uh, a 1,000 people in here, and I do thank you guys again. So, All right, guys, have a good night. Be safe.